Tommy Boyd on BBC Southern Counties Radio. Well, very good evening to you. This is your Tommy Boyd. Um, he's, uh, hmm, thought he was... St- Alison's here as well. How are Hello, you? Hello, I'm good. I was a bit of a kerfuffle there, I think the word is. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I just, I didn't realise that you didn't, didn't know. And I didn't come in on Thursday, so I didn't see the memo, so... Yeah. So you turned up at about, t- well, ten minutes ago. Yeah. And, um, I, uh, was, well, I was here... It was a bit awkward because I said hello. I didn't expect there'd be somebody in the studio, so I thought it was a technician. So I said, everything all right? And he said, yeah, no, no, no. Bless him. Um, but, um, so, there we are. What's he like? Bob? Yeah. Um, he's all right, a bit sort of knitwear and, um, hush puppies. <laughs> you know? I think he's, uh, based in Gloucester. Right. Um, and we didn't get much of a chance to chat. Is it going to be like that every week now then, did he say, or is it just... I don't know. Mm. Um, have you heard anything? Well, I just said they were trying him out, but I don't know if they're trying him out every week, or if it was just a one-off today. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and I mean, the stuff mm. about the sparrows, yeah, we care about sparrows. And... Well, did you hear the stuff he was saying about, uh, Baghdad? Ah, yes. I decided <laughs> we wouldn't go there. No. Um... Did I you? think, yeah. Well, thanks for raising it. <laughs> well, I... I thought it was a bit near the knuckle. I mean, he didn't say that we should... Obviously, he didn't say no, that we no, should no, drop no. a nuclear no, bomb No, 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 and he said... Major. No, and he said but that... But he did kind of say... Yeah, but he said that it would have to be well thought out. <laughs> <laughs> if I said... There'd be uproar. Well, pe- there are the, there's the usual suspects who would um, use it, uh, you know, as a reason to try and get me fired. Well, yeah, I mean, I, Again. we get into trouble if we talk about men and fish and boats. Well, apparently, <laughs> were, were you telling me that somebody, uh, can we say this, that somebody had a, was it, had a concern about you saying something on air last week, but she just didn't say No, I just didn't say. You didn't go near it. No, somebody made a complaint yes. about me talking about female menstruation, and yes. I didn't. And she, we didn't quite come anywhere near no, the conversation. No, so I don't know what they're listening to. Oh, well, from now until one o'clock in the morning, it was ten at nine in the evening until one o'clock, but now, thanks to the welcome arrival of, um... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> He's probably listening in the mm. car. The welcome arrival of Bob Staunton. We now begin at ten, um, through until one. Um, Bob plays music and has some exciting quizzes. Mm. And, and some unusual thoughts. Yes. On well, world politics. Yes. Hello to Tommy Boy from Italy. We're sitting here laughing and adoring listening tonight on the World Wide Web. Have you tried olive juice? This is to do with um, talking about drinking diluted urine last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mally and Grula have emailed, have you tried olive juice? If you can't stomach that, don't drink urine. Always try it with some sort of juice. We recommend cranberry and uh, urine. Oh dear, cranberry is very good for you though. Yeah? Yeah. In what way? Well, all of that sort of urinary tract business. Yeah. Cranberry is the way to go. I feel vaguely, um, besmirched. I thought you did a bit. Yeah, I, well a little bit. But I, I don't think, think he's should. rude. Well, I think he's rude. It's rude. I think what he did was rude, and I think what he said on air was a bit rude. And I don't like rude people, as you know, because I'm very polite. And there's been a couple of texts, yes, which have upset you. Yes, I'm not happy. Um, perhaps you'd like to read it from your screen, the one in question. Okay. Um, it's just it just says, um, are you both in favour of abortion? Are you abortionists? Mm. Now let's get this straight. Go on. This isn't about whether I am pro or anti-abortion. All that happened was I mentioned Mm. that Channel 4 televised Mm. an abortion. Mm. I didn't give an opinion. I didn't say what my views were concerning it. I just mentioned the word. Dare I say fish and boat? Oh, God. (laughs) Not the mood I'm in tonight. That person's wound me up, and now you're going to tell me someone's going to wind me up even more with a fish and a boat. No, I think you'll like this. Do you remember the lady who said last week that she wanted the address from us for the Broadcasting Complaints Committee? Oh, which one? (laughs) Because she said said that I had advocated drinking urine and there were youngsters listening. Yeah. Which, of course, I hadn't, but anyway. (laughs) Well, you know, I said it takes about six weeks to come round. Yeah. Well, who has been the most uh, persistent and vociferous campaigner against um, this type of radio on BBC Southern Counties Radio? And I'll give you a clue. It's Mary. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Mary and her boat. Mary's emailed. And she said, I, I would just like to say that what Bob Staunton had to say about nuclear missiles was very insensitive. 
women and children would be killed. Nuclear weapons are responsible for more deaths today than murders. Now don't, because she's trying. So just let that one go. Yes. I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but thank God Tommy Boyd is back. <laughs> I never hear her say it either. Good on you, Mary. Instead of that, George Bush sound alike pillock. People like him should not be allowed near a wireless. The BBC should be disgusted. So she's got a. She, she now she's now she's on my side. And she wants Bob Staunton sacked now. Oh, Bob's not listening. It was his first night. Well, he did say that he thought that he wanted oh, weather. Oh, yeah, he did sort of, yeah. Mm. It's an outrageous comment. Yes, we have had an hour chopped off. Um, to the um, sanctimonious, unctuous, oily, oleaginous Bob Staunton. There we are. I'm it. really glad that you I weren't going to get him. into oh, a slanging him. match with no, a fellow I hate master. him. I didn't like him when he pottery, pottery. He potters. Come He's on, a man who potters. Tommy, 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 Tommy. He come potters on. in his knitwear and his hush puppies, and you can tell that he smokes a pipe, and he potters everywhere, and he's got an old rover, which has probably got those leather seats which are really shiny and slightly cracked, and he's got one of those sort of tortoiseshell dashboards, and he's got one of those really thin thin, 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 thin steering wheels and he probably potters along the A something or other <laughs> tiresome tune like Edelweiss or something oh, like that. Come on now. Come and, on. And, 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 and he mutters about sparrows and he mutters about bin liners and then he mutters that have we thought about has our government thought about deploying nuclear weapons in Iraq to back the troops up? It's a ludicrous thing to say and it makes me really angry and I think it's, it's really cross that there are people like that who are allowed the airways because that, it's that kind of insidious, creeping, involved sort of intellectual, no, philosophical fascism is what I'd call it. I'm not calling him a Nazi, I'm saying it's philosophical fascism to have that sort of creeping, um, uh, unkindness bubbling away and, and you kind of get away with it because you're nice to animals and you, uh, you're a human being like the rest of us and bin liners annoy you. Bin liners probably would have annoyed most of the Nazi party. Um, and they probably like sparrows. Tommy, I think we need to uh, play a song now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, hi, Tommy. You said like this is Hayley. Hi, Tommy. You said last week that you have tasted your own urine. Yes. Why not? Just try it. Diluted. Give it a sip. See what it does? Didn't make me feel better. Definitely didn't make me feel worse. That's all. Why not? Why try not try? If, if you know there are people who do this sort of thing on a regular basis and claim that it has beneficial side effects, why shouldn't you? However, Haley then says, would you drink someone else's? I don't think I would, because that's kind of a, you know, um, do or dare thing, isn't it? And what about live on air? No, I don't think so. But Haley, thank you for your text, uh, for your email there, and thanks to everybody who is uh, texting the show. Uh, Lynn in Horndean says, I want Tommy Boyd on from 9 p.m., please. Is there a petition going? I, I, I am seriously thinking about uh, making a phone call on Monday to the powers that be and say, you know, look, what's all this about? Ah, now I understand our next caller is, is Bob. Is that right? Hello, Bob? Hello there. How are you? How are you? Uh, well, how are you? I'm very well. Um, well I'm great. You're thanks. great. Um, the reason I called, uh, I hope you don't mind, uh, driving home with the radio on, um, thought I heard yourself having a bit of a go at yours truly. Um, no, I don't think so. Well, it uh, sounded a bit like it to me. Which bit? Beg your pardon? Which bit it sounded like me having a go at yours truly? Well... Yours truly is yourself, and obviously you weren't having a go at yourself. Um, the phrase is used by speakers as a polite alternative to me or myself. Well, what's impolite about me? Well, pretty much everything from what my listeners tell me. Now, look, Bob, if you mean me, say me. I can't be doing with these little sort of artificial linguistic affectations. Yours truly is pompous and it's outdated. It's one of those annoying little phrases that stand out as meaning, hey, look at me, I'm a bit of a character. And yes, I was tempted to correct on air. Oh, one yeah. piece of, yes, one piece of absolute nonsense right. that you came out with. Well, what mate. is that then? Well, do you not know? I mean, can you not guess? Tell me. Well, what do you think? You're a bit about the poor old sparrows? Sparrows are under threat. I don't care. Charming. The bit about bin liners being a nightmare. They are the bane of my life. Well, there you go again. Why in God's name is a bane? It's something you find a nightmare. Didn't you get any kind of education at all in that borstal? <sighs> I'm... Bob, I'm going to have to get back to you, mate. I'm... 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 
What's the matter with the man? Oh, dear. Are you... I mean... Am I in trouble? Um, no. But, um, I just... I just think that perhaps, um, the conversation that you and Bob need to have isn't one to be had on air. Um, the basic pattern of things last week was that we had about 45 minutes of people who basically berate, were berating me for no known reason, because they don't know me, and they couldn't actually put their finger on anything that I'd said or done that was in any way off-beam. Okay, but they wanted me fired. And by the way, keep the complaint letters coming in. Ah, excellent. We've got uh, Hedge calling in from Hove, who, who uh, wants to have a complain. Is that right, Hedge? That is right, yeah. Hello, darling. I don't... I want some music on at night. I don't want you burbling away. What would you like? I like David Allen on. I don't like your... Well, what, what does he sing? I don't like your program. Well, what does he sing? I, he, he plays a lot of lovely news. Well, like what? It doesn't matter what. I don't... What do you keep talking about these wretched blinking phone calls for? They're nothing... I don't... It's a, a, an absolute load of rubbish. Why? What's wrong with listening to people? What's wrong with people? I think you run out of breath, don't you? No, I don't. I'll tell you what, right? You tell me a song that you like and we'll see what a load of rubbish it is. Go on, you tell me a song you like. Off you go. I've already done that. No, you haven't. You haven't mentioned one not, song. Not to you, I haven't. Well, you tell me a no, song. No, I wasn't. Oh, go on, you tell me a song. You tell me a song that's got any worth, got any merit, got any weight, got any warmth. Go, now. One song, any song you like. You tell me. Tell me a song, Hedge. I dare you. I bet you can't. I bet you can't think of one song that's got any wisdom. I bet you can't think of one song that's got any real humanity. It's all fake. It's all cheating. It's all thought out in advance. It means nothing. There isn't a song that means anything compared to one real human being spilling their heart, spilling their guts, spilling their beans, what, lies, what is... betraying who they really are, offering up the wisdom that they themselves have gleaned in life. But just because they aren't Simon and Garfunkel, just because they haven't got a fat recording contract, they can't express themselves. Well, they can on this show. So if you want Simon and Garfunkel, and by the way, I had to nominate Simon and Garfunkel because you, Hedge, couldn't think of a single song that had any merit when I asked you to, okay? It's me that mentioned Simon and Garfunkel and what a load of old rubbish they are. Well, I've just read this as my complaint and that's that. Name me a song that's got any merit. I only like the classics. Are well, you... name, me a, name me one then, person. Name me one. Richard Torber. Well, mm -hmm. hum it. Huh? Hum it. Richard Torber is one of them. Hum it! I'm not going to hum it. Well, I don't know what it is. It's so obscure. Name me a pop song. Something that you might hear I, on this radio station. I hate pops. Well, that's all that you get. That's what this radio station plays. Pop what? songs. Good ones. <laughs> good ones, mind you. Yeah. So maybe you're confusing us with another radio station. But you needn't get berserk over it. Why not? I'm passionate. What's wrong with that? I think we'd better close it. I just don't like your programme. That's because you haven't got any humanity. Well, you've run out of breath, I You're think. more interested in something antiseptic, something carefully prepared, honed, tailored, in order to smooth you into some kind of completely artificial coma. That's music. This is reality. These are real people. Are they really? Yes. Uh, Real people uh, talking about uh, their lives, talking about their loves, talking about what turns them on, talking about, in your case, what makes you angry. Well, and uh, you are more interesting than Simon and Garfunkel. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a pain in my backside. But you haven't got an argument. That's my I'm point. Just saying you that haven't I... got an argument. All you know is that you think you don't like something. I don't but you like... don't even know that you don't. I don't like your program. And you don't know what you don't like about it. Oh, you yes, can't I... ask. I... Well, articulate it. Then. I... You must have run out of breath. That isn't an argument. That's a feeble insult. And don't get me started on insults. Because, Hedge, I'm good. Oh, oh, I'm good. And I'm not going to insult you. You must be. Well, you see, you come on, you've got no argument. You've got no heart or humanity. All you've got is a feeble insult. I'd rather you came on and were 
Well, I'm well, decently insulted. Well, I don't know if the listeners are your programme, so that sounds... Well, of course it is. Switch it off. I will. Good. So I'm glad. I, I don't I, want I, you listening. Good. Do not listen. Right. Good. Goodbye. Well, let me hear you turn the radio off then. Better still, turn it on to another radio station and phone me back in half an hour if you found anything remotely as interesting as me. Well, don't worry, because I'm retiring now. What, you mean you're going to bed? Yes. Well, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Who, 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 do you honestly suppose that anybody cares that you're going to bed? Have you rung me up to have a whinge and then tell us that it's I'm your bedtime? I'm only just one of many. No, you're not. I'm not. No, you're not. Well, how's your phone then? You're, I, I reckon you're one of about 27 people who like having a good old moan on the phone to the radio station that they think they run. That's what I think. Oh, all right, fair enough. All right? Yeah. Because you're not a first-time caller, are you? Say pardon? I said you're not a first-time caller. No, but no. I, I used to listen to your programmes a lot. Bye, Hedge. Sweet dreams. Right. Oh, eight four five nine five seven double zero five seven. I'm enjoying the company of Sally from Crawley. Good evening, Sally. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm just ch really trying to say I've just come back from business trip of uh, about six months. Uh, no, actually, it was six and a half months, actually. And I uh, haven't really been listening to any sort of radios apart from Radio 4. Um, I've just come back to Southern Counties, actually. And to be honest, I've just heard tonight, and it's really put me off listening to Southern Counties, I'm afraid. I've never known somebody like yourself. I've, I can't believe how just self-righteous you are. And you say, I, I mean, thinking that you can know people over the phone, it's just mm. absolutely incredible. Well, somebody has to. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they're called psychologists. Well, I am a um, psychologist. Have you got a degree? Yes, I have. Oh, right, well done. So have I. Not at all. <laughs> and it's just as... Where did you get yours? Huh? Where did you get yours? Topics University. When were you there? Oh, God, about... Oh, sorry, now it's about 85. Oh, I just left. Oh, Shame. Okay. They might have got on. <laughs> what, sort oh, of what sort of uh, what, what sort of psychology do you? Um... Well, that's not my job now. No, that's not what I do now. No, it's mine. Do you see? Yeah, but the thing is, yeah. there's a difference between sort of psychology and putting people down. You know what I mean? And, and to, to be honest, sorry, I've missed the first few words of the sentence. So but, what? Just a big one. Sorry. There's something, something, something psychology to putting people there's, down. There's a difference between actual psychology and putting people down. Well, it depends what sort of. Um, it depends. Yes, what sort but of I mean, this kind of. Hang on a second. Go back and just finish. I said it depends on what sort of technique you're you're using and why. Yes, but why be aggressive to somebody who's just phoning up? I'm not aggressive to people. They're aggressive to I me. Mean, anyway, let, let me finish. Anyhow, the the only image that you're giving across is a very self-righteous, banal presenter that's no. very, very boring, and I mean... No, no, not boring. <laughs> de 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 it's definitely actually, not there, boring. There's very, very few people that make me sort of real... I mean, it's probably one over for you, actually, in that case, to actually make me shake with anger, but I'm actually indignant on behalf of all these people. Well, they shouldn't ring up and be rude to me. <laughs> They're not actually being rude to me. They are rude to me. They, they, people. they... I can't people, actually believe how the people self who deserve, opinionated you are. The, well, everybody's self-opinionated, you fool. Excuse me? Everybody's self-opinionated. You are. Hark at you. Hark at you. You're saying that somebody else is self-opinionated mm -hmm. when what you've done is pitch up on this radio station and oh, just believe me, this is the last time I'm listening to it. I'm going to say this to I'm going to say... I'm going to... No, 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 excuse no, me. No, this is you. Because, yeah, you are. Because you can't actually listen. You don't have any listening skills. You don't have any listening abilities. The point that I want to make, the point that I want to make, and I'm going to make, is that you're utterly hypocritical in slagging off somebody for being self-opinionated when all you've done is dish out a bunch of opinions. Obviously, you didn't fail. You probably failed your degree. Very weak. Radio 4 now. Very does it by no, not yet. See, she could have been quite good fun. I've been on a business trip for six months. Well, six and a half, actually. <laughs> oh, Sally, 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 Sally. Right. Uh, that was Brian from Sutton. Just to no. say hello. 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 He, he asked for a request to the song, but we're playing a request want? at the moment. No, definitely not. No, but want? later on. What did he want? Did he say? Just anything. I can never understand that. Could you play anything for me, for my wife? What did he want? He wants a song yeah. for the people in his area who have survived the tsunami. How does that all work then, for anything? What's the end result of that? I'm not with you, Brian. That's what he asked. And why not? Why just people in your area? Well, I don't think he just meant his area, but that's what he said, but I'm sure he means people on a wider scale. People from the Southern Counties region who have survived the tsunami. I'm sure he just means people everywhere who have survived and who haven't survived. 
Well, we've got Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton first. So we'll dedicate that to whoever it is that Brian wants a record dedicated for. Okay. Um, okay. Hello. Good evening, BBC Southern Counties Radio. You're on the air. Hello. Oh, hello, Tommy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Who's this? And, and to Alison. Happy Mary. New Year. My Thank little Mary. Is that Mary from Winchester? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm not from East Grinstead either. Now, in view of the dire effects of the Asian tsunami, I believe the demolition of all rainforests should cease immediately. Recently, I saw a TV program where rainforests were being cut down in an eastern country, which, if I recall correctly, was Indonesia. I might be wrong. Perhaps I, I don't know anything about... I don't know any link between um, no. the earthquake, which was responsible for the tsunami, right. and, and, the, um, and the deforestation... Mm. Of rainforest in Indonesia. What, no. What's the what's the well? I, I asked a friend who studies geology, and he said that cutting down the rainforest causes soil erosion, which leads to millions of tons of extra sediment being deposited in the sea. That may build up pressure, which might exacerbate earthquakes. In other words, it might bring them forward. I can't see this. Them. I can't see this. Yes, but you're not a geologist, are you? No, but I'm not an idiot either, and no. I can't see how cutting down trees causes earthquakes. Can't the earthquake, you? no. The earthquake was caused. Mm -hmm. I know what it was caused by. Was it caused it's by? been on the television enough. Well, about fault lines and things yes. like that, and no, no, volcanic no. eruptions under the sea. We, we've heard all that, but I have another idea about it no, and I'm but quite sure many other people do but they probably no. You know, look, you can't, you can't, look, you can't, look, I haven't done the research. Well, you can't I'll, bump I'll, into I'll, somebody who says he's a geologist. You oh, can't. I'm, I'm, I'm not Hang on, wait, wait, right. wait, wait a minute. Yep. You can't go round frightening the horses about the rainforests mm -hmm. on the basis of what you've got. Because you oh. must remember, this is such an important point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the, what I call the John Craven's News Round Syndrome, oh, whereby we constantly tell the children that the planet Earth is in dire straits. It's not. It's hmm. fine. You think so? No, it. I know it for a fact, mate. It's oh. better than it's ever been. You're, you're, li li you're, li li you're living hand. in cloud cuckoo land, mate. You're living in the... You're, you're, you are living under a black cloud, mate. Yes. Yes. Because there is a black cloud. Ah, if you're not careful, it's going to come to England and wipe off the whole of the south coast. With don't you? Don't go. Park at you. Park at you. Park at you. you. All this doom and gloom. Yep. And it's all rubbish. We've got to be realistic and look at the causes. We know that the causes are natural. Oh, but come we on. are exacerbating oh, them. You play, do, you, do you know what? Do you know what? Coming on the radio, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself. Coming on the radio saying that people cutting down trees in Indonesia has, as a consequence, the worst disaster, the worst disaster in human history. We're not saying it's as a consequence, we're saying it may have led towards this disaster. It, well, that, if I may say so, is heinous. Right. Heinous. Well, you can think that if you like. Oh, no, I'm not telling you that that's what I think, I'm telling you that's what it is. It is heinous. I to, specu to speculate... Will you listen? And stop inhaling. What do you think? Is look, you're, look, you're not listening. Change. You are not listening. Listen. Are you? Listen properly. Thank yes. you. I'm asking you yes. not to inhale and start a sentence during the second word of any sentence that I try to communicate with you. Okay? Are you? Have you got that? Uh, I think so. Is that a deal? Yeah, yeah. Can you do that? Because I can do that. Yeah, go on then. It's not difficult. No, no, I'm sure it's not. Go on. And what are you going to say? I'm going to say this. Planet Earth has just experienced the worst natural disaster in its history. We just Correct. Need to, yeah, Correct. Yes. We just need to stay there. Yeah, yeah. We can go looking for causes, if that's what people want to do. But this is an act of God. It's a natural occurrence. Mm-hmm. And we... I haven't ourselves. finished, I haven't finished. Okay. You're desperate to get in, aren't you? Because you're not really... Because you think you're that not we... really. You're not really taking it on I board, am. are you? No, you're not. I I want, I'm beginning to wonder your, about your listening skills. Your statement, whether you actually you? listen. You, whether you actually listened to this person. What were the qualifications of this person who said they were a geologist? 
Well, actually, he's retired. I didn't say he was a geologist. I said he is studying geology. But what does he's that a mean? retired osteopath and naturopath. Oh, for God's sake, you're bringing warnings to the world about natural disasters and their possible causes from a retired osteopath? He studies geology. He's a retired osteopath. So what? Well, why didn't you say he was a retired osteopath? <laughs> Who the hell is <laughs> to it? Because next I'll tell you what you do, then, mm -hmm. mate, all right? Next time your back's got a spasm, yeah. go see a geologist. Oh, right. I might do. I might find a geologist who is also a naturopath. Got to go. Uh -huh. There's something about some people that means that as soon as something like this happens, rather than dwell... Are you still there? Yeah. How much have you sent then? How, if I may ask, how much, have you, how much have you sent so far to the disaster appeal? I'm not telling you. Okay, fine, don't. That would be more to the point, wouldn't it? Yeah. Don't you think, think that would be more to the point? No, because I think it's action on the ground that's needed. We what? need people to go out there in helicopters or whatever to, to deal with all the situations that are still being undealt with. Hmm. And the money is all being thrown at it. Yes, that's very good. Thrown at it? What do you mean thrown at it? The money is all coming in. What do you mean? But it's when are they going to get what? the action on the ground? Well, you don't know what that means. Of course I do. What does it mean? Well, I've seen it on the television. Your life is lived through the television and retired osteopaths. <laughs> do you really think... And that? people and like Tommy Boyd. Ah, <laughs> now go on, dear. People go like on, dear. Tommy. What? Put the Dracula teeth in and give it a good old <laughs> shake. Go on, dear. You yeah. want to really, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, all I will say is that if 2005 sees itself out and I don't hear anything more ridiculous than the, the idea that a retired osteopath believes that cutting down the rainforest is responsible for the worst natural disaster in human history, if I don't hear anything more ridiculous than that, I will not be at all surprised. He didn't actually say that. He, he just gave me some information which I asked. For. Which was because, what? Which was, is there uh, any effect in cutting oh. down the rainforest upon the earthquakes and all the disasters which have been taking place over the past years? Well, there are millions of them. Name me another one. <clears throat> There have been quite enough of them. I'll, just take, the one, I'll just take the one of them. We're going to, uh, don't worry about that. We're going to I do worry about you. I do worry about people like you. Who think the earth. Every 20 minutes there's a natural disaster and somebody's responsible for it. You can't name me one other natural disaster and yet you said that they've been coming thick and fast down the last years. Well, name well, me one more. You should know them. I do, but well, you don't. In place in America, in the United States, California, everywhere. This is cloud Look, cuckoo stuff. Yes, you're in cloud cuckoo land. Mate. I know what's what. I know we which way's up and which way's down. the earth and the Amazon rainforest and all the other rainforests. Have you ever been to the Amazon rainforest? Not myself. Well, no. I have. Never well, my family have. Well, I have. What Good. did they tell you about it? They didn't tell me anything. I just got my information from oh, other sources. From, from, from retired osteopaths on the television. The information is in the public domain. What does that it's been mean? Been on television enough times. Where is this public domain? You make it sound like something from the. I've seen plenty of documentaries. Alan Fournier, the I, public domain. I've seen plenty of documentaries. Do you know how public? Do you know how public? Do you, the Amazon do you, you just watched too many editions of John Craven's oh. News Round. Never Let heard me it. tell you. Let me tell you what the public domain is. The public domain is such that only today were we allowed to know... Yes, I know. ...that a patient with a history of mental illness tried to kidnap the Princess Royal in 1974 and she told him to naff off, I haven't got two million quid. I and, do you know, shush, <laughs> I want to ask you who has faith in the public domain why it has taken us 30 years to learn that. That's the question I'm asking you, and nothing else. Well, one of the things is the Data Protection Act. And therefore you trust the public domain? I don't say I trust it. I'm saying that there have been documentaries on television about the effects of cutting down rainforests, and it's common knowledge. I am all for cutting down the rainforests. Why? They are a complete waste of space. You are an antichrist. Beautiful. I think we'll leave it there. Hello? Hello, who's this? A Hello? caller, a caller. Hello, caller, what's wrong? Oh, hi, Tommy. Yeah. Everyone knows the tsunami was a natural disaster. No one has said otherwise. No, uh, you haven't been listening, have you? Yes, I have. But no, lady, lady, I don't lady. think you have, because you've twisted the words that the lady said. Uh, no, I haven't at all. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. She didn't say that it was other than a natural disaster. Now, what's your name? 
I'm not telling you. No, you're going to go then if you're not going to. I'll tell you something. No, 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 no. You're going to go unless you tell me your name now. All right, Mary. Right, are you another Mary? Yes. Lots of Marys tonight. Now, Ruth is spelled R U C H E, and kerfuffle is in the dictionary. Stick to the point. Let me ask you a question. How good are you at having conversations? It depends who I'm conversing with. Well, you decided you want to talk to me. Are you any good at it? I wouldn't say yay or nay. Well, then I'll make the it's judgment. It's not for me I? to say. Right. Oh, I'm well, sure you will. Yeah. Well, it just involves listening and oh. then rejoining to what you've heard. And not twisting people's words. No. The caller who called wanted to find somebody to blame for the scale of the disaster of the tsunami. And I find that reprehensible at this moment, at this moment in time, reprehensible. They weren't blaming anyone. You're lying. They were saying it was... No, a you're lying. Disaster. You're lying because, because you want me to be wrong. Not because you want the truth, but because you would prefer for me to be wrong. The caller said that she had been told by somebody who knew something about geology that the impact of the tsunami might have been greater because people had been cutting down trees in Indonesia. That's exactly it. Yes, and that's reprehensible. Is it? Yes. Well, how do you know otherwise? Because I'm a broadcaster and I'm a journalist and I'm a man. Well, how do you... Oh, God, that says a lot, doesn't it? Get to your point. That Make your point. Lot. Make your point. Make it as well as I've made my point. Well, Go I on. think you've just tw twisted the person's words. You've twisted that lady's words. She never said that the tsunami wasn't a natural disaster. What was she trying to do with her point? She was just trying to say that things that we do to the earth can exacerbate these things, possibly. So what's her point? Well, that's her point, that rainforests so What's her point about the tsunami? That the rainforests cutting down should be, should cease immediately. Is she saying that the disaster was made worse by people cutting down it trees? It could well be. Is and who are you to say that it wasn't? I'll tell you who am I to say that it wasn't. At this moment in time, there is so much humanity involved in this terrible disaster that to go around flicking out little petty little bits of blame based on what a, a retired osteopath speculated is reprehensible. I'll, I'll just stick with that word because I could be so much more honest, but I won't because my thoughts, as yours should be and hers should be, are still with the victims of this terrible disaster, so much so that the notion of going and hunting for some kind of perpetrator is reprehensible. I'm not going to go further. Good. That's my view. Well, I think... You but you would be more interested in finding out that I was wrong. Not at all. Absolutely. Not at all. Totally. <laughs> Who cares if you're right or wrong? You do. I only care about what's happening to the Earth at the moment. We are destroying our Earth. I'm not. You might be. You can use your personal plural if you want to. I don't. I'm not. You might be. You are when you say that it's quite all right to cut down the rainforests. I don't have a problem with it. No. No. You wouldn't, would you? No. Anyway, uh, maybe I haven't watched John Craven's news round as much as you have. You do have a problem with your spelling. You ever been to the rainforests? You've asked that before. What well, have you been on before? People. I have not been to the rainforests. Fine, I have. What do you want to know about Good. them? What do you want to know about them? I think I know quite enough to know that... From John Craven's news the... round... Cutting down the rainforest is detrimental both to our climate and our environment. And that's all I have to say. Well, you don't know too much about your subject and I don't want you to be frightened. I wish you weren't frightened and I feel terrible that the business that I'm, I'm in... Uh, you are. No. Yes, you are. I'm not. Well, you it's should be. If, know, what you're, if what you're saying I know is true... from now on, if we start looking at the minute, wait a minute, air, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. might change for the better. If what you believe is true, you should be frightened. What are you, then? I'm not frightened. But what are you? I'm just a person, an ordinary person. No, I mean, what emotion do you get from what you believe to be the truth? I get anger. Okay, don't be angry. From the fact that people are cutting down the rainforest. Don't be angry. <laughs> because you get your information from the business that I work in, and 99% of it is rubbish. Well... And I know that because um, I've been to the rainforest, and I've worked for 30 years in broadcasting and the media. Mm -hmm. And okay? you, think, you think that... I know the where you've been the getting... The rainforest has no effect on our climate. You've been getting your information from people I know. People who know the facts. 
Okay. Do you think that's what broadcasters and journalists are? People who know the facts? Some are. Who? They vary, don't they? Which ones? How do you know which ones to trust? <laughs> it's pretty obvious. How does that work? Most of the time. Go on, tell me. Give me, tell, give, me a bit more, give me a bit more on that. No, I'm not going to go any further. Because you can't, can Because you? I'm not going off the shall I tell you? Shall I tell you who you tend to believe? Mm hmm You tend to believe the doom mongers. <laughs> well, I think we all ought to give them some heed. Just because they're doom mongers? No, yes, certainly, if it's the truth. Supposing that they're just pandering to what you have declared you want to hear or read? Why should they? Why because should they Because that makes pander? their... Why, why? Why do you think? <laughs> why should they give you what you want? Why, why, should a, why should a media outlet give you, the listener, the reader, the viewer, what you want? Why should they do that? Part of the media is engaged in telling the truth. Which one? Oh, I, I'm not going to tell you. You should know. You're a journalist. You I, know more than I do. I, I certainly about do. About the media. But you're the one who's telling me about the media. You're the one who's telling me about your powers of discernment. You're the one who's, te you're the one who's telling me you know who to trust. Yes, tell me. I do. Who? The people who speak the truth. And how do you know which ones are, are it's they? It's pretty obvious. You've already said that, but give me more. No. Why? Because you should know. Because you can't. You should know. You can't. I do, but I could tell you. Well, I can't list them all off name by name. You couldn't list one. I'm not going to cause any disruption on the radio. You can't. By, by naming names. You can't. No. You I... can't. You can't. Well, because there aren't many of them, frankly, but there are There's one none or two who speak them. the truth. You don't know who they are. You believe that somebody who's saying something that fits your picture of the world is telling the truth. If documentaries are put on the television about the Amazon rainforest, from people who are actually there on the ground talking to the tribes whose lives have been ruined by what's going on, then I think we can believe them. And that's all I have to say. Good night. Good night, Alvin. Good night. Well, <clears throat> I think that goes for all of us, because I tend to believe people who are saying things that fit my picture of the world. But I'm aware of that. She's not. That's the difference. Big difference. Big boogie difference. Let's take caller on line one. Good evening, you're on Southern Counties Radio. Who's this? Is that me? Yes, it's you. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Dorothy Ball in Stenning, West Sussex. Hello, Dorothy. Hello. Um, I listen to your arguments. I think you're very self-opinionated. Yes, that's right. Um, and I don't think they're valid at all. Well, that makes you self-opinionated. So. Not at all. We all have opinions that we can put, we can make them politely. Yeah. And we can stress them and not argue with other people. Your job is to talk on the radio. Um, I listen to Paul. Where does it say that? I beg your pardon? Where does it say that my job is to talk on the radio? Well, you are, you are on the, on the radio to produce and have a chat show. That's part of your, of, of your contract. Well, I, I know what my job is, you don't. Well, I know what you're supposed to do. I work for no, BBC, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon, you haven't got a clue what I'm supposed to do. How We're dare you? are not doing your job properly. How dare you? I can. How dare you? Just because you were somebody's clerk, uh, I beg broadcasting your house, How now you you're telling me that you think that you know what my job is supposed to be, you haven't got a clue. How dare you? How dare you, sir? I was you don't know what my job was either. What were you? I worked for a producer. As a clerk? No. What? As a PA. As a clerk? No, as yes, a PA. Which I is guess you're dead right, you're a clerk. Well, you're self opinionated on that. Well, at least I guess your job better than you guessed mine. How do you qualify your job? You've got more, you've got more clues about my job than I had about yours, but I guessed yours. You did not guess mine. I did, you're a clerk. Well, and by the way, what's wrong with being a clerk? I didn't say there was anything wrong with being a clerk. I know you didn't. You seem to think that you were above being a clerk. I was. Oh, you were above being yes. a clerk? Yes. Well, I hope there are some clerks listening who you've put down quite nicely for no, no I particular put reason. Them down. Yes, I you have. have. Not put them. Well, you're all progress in our job. You're denigrating clerks. I'm not denigrating clerks at all. You are, you're saying. I am. You, you were better I'm not going to argue with you because I heard that previous lady and I think you, you do take her very badly. I'm not, I'm not putting you down if you put her down, which I think was very bad, bad policy. That's, that's up to you how you do your job. But I'm just saying that I think your beh behaviour on this program at times is quite abusive. Thank you very much. And quite aggressive. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll agree on that. I do, absolutely. Pardon? I do, absolutely. Oh, well, that's good, because at least now we know what we're talking about. Well, I don't think there's any confusion, except perhaps for yourself. Not at all. 
Not at all. I was merely stating an opinion, which you do very well. Yes, I do, don't I? Yes, you do. Don't very I? Sure, don't. And very, very, very aggressive. I haven't had anybody oh. come up past my knee yet. No. No. That would be a job too, wouldn't it? It would, wouldn't it, eh? Yeah, it would. It would indeed. Yes, it would. Yeah. No, I'd I love to see the day myself. Yeah, I would too. But I just think that sometimes you can be over the top. You can be very aggressive and very, very unpleasant to people who listen or try to listen to this program and get so infuriated by Good. yourself. Infuriated. Good, I'm glad. And I'll tell you why I'm glad. Because this country's got quite enough as uh, anaesthetic floating around. I think we need just a little bit more excitement and I think we need a little bit more edge. We need a little bit more attitude. We need a little bit more sharp points, we need a little more spike. Bath, get us going. We need to get our temperature raised. We need to get our pulse racing. We're all half asleep. We're all don't knows. You think so? I do. And what were your, what were your opinion on this terrible, terrible, earth-shattering earthquake? Don't you think people uh, went for that and, and helped out on that one? Are we, are we all apathetic and quiet on that? Because I don't think so. What was your attitude to that? Oh, uh, that's not a question yet. It is a question. It is not. Well, I'm just asking you. How can you have an opinion about an earthquake? I asked you what your opinion was. Well, I know. Well, how can you have an opinion about well, an I earthquake? Have. I have. I'm What's your opinion. earthquake opinion, then? I think it's a terrible, terrible situation. Good Lord, you don't think that an earthquake's a terrible, terrible situation? Hang on just a second. Give me a pen. I'm just write that one down. Right. Let's get this straight. You think that an earthquake is a terrible, terrible thing? For the people who suffered. Focuses on a particular aspect or issue of the disaster. And who's that having a go? My husband, he gets very cross with you. Well, get, put him on then if he thinks he's so no, tough. No, he wouldn't speak to him, I'm sorry. He wouldn't. Why not then? Is he better than that? I, I don't expect to answer that. Well then, tell him to be quiet whilst you're talking to me. It's rude. Isn't it? No. Yes, it he, is? He's giving me an opinion on my conversation with you. That's all he's saying, which he's quite entitled to. He was very, I don't agree. That's he right. was very cross that I rang up and took, took the trouble to try and talk to you. Was he good? I'm pleased about that. What's his name? No, I'm not going to discuss my husband with you on the phone. There's no need to do I merely phoned you up. To well, he's say appeared on this program. How are we going to log him? I beg your pardon? He's appeared on the program. How are we going to log him as anonymous? I'm sorry? He has appeared on the program. He has? Yes, we heard him talking. Oh, well, yeah. I shouldn't appear. That's just a verbal thing in the background. He no. hasn't appeared at all. Yes, he hasn't Any more than you've appeared. I hear you. Yes. I don't see you. Yeah, but we have to log him. What do we log him as? No. Come on, woman, come to bed. No, no, no. What should we log him as? No. But no, the point being that I may... Coward of East Grimstead. No, I wouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't uh, continue that tone anymore, if I were you. Why well, not? What's going to happen? It's not very complimentary to anybody, really, is it? But anyway, disregarding Well, that. why won't he come to the phone, then? He didn't come to the phone. He's talking to me across the room. I know, but you're talking to somebody else. That's rude. I was taught not to talk to people who are talking to somebody else. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What do you mean, dear, oh, dear? That's true. I was taught that that is manners. You have manners? Well, your husband doesn't. I don't think you do on occasions, either. Well, let's talk about your husband. Extremely rude. Uh, well, extremely rude. I, I don't talk to people who are talking to somebody else. That's very offensive indeed. And Thank as, you very much. As for your comments on Elvis uh, Presley, they again are your opinion. You're not an Elvis Presley fan, are you? If I was, I wouldn't talk about you because I think he was. I think he's good. He was a good performer. No, he wasn't. Well, this is, this is what you're saying. He was trash. He you're was trash. And most of the people who think he's fantastic are pretty trashy. I, this is now. This is your opinion. You're no. Very, you're very detrimental to it, people's thoughts. No, look, it's just a fact. No, it's not a fact. It's, it's your a fact. It's not a fact. You're yes, making Unlike some people, I've been around the block a few times. I've travelled. I've met all sorts. I've kept my eyes open. I've kept journals. I've watched. I've photographed. I've analysed. My opinions are based on travels. Well, I've travelled extensively. What, well, I wouldn't... I wouldn't... Doubt it. Are they fun? Where? Well, I'm not going to miss all the countries I've been to. Well, it's like that remark in Monty Python, isn't it? Yes, she's travelled. She's from Burley. I've been to America, I've been all over Canada, I've been all over Europe, just to name a few. So I think I've travelled both apart from going, but I've never been to Perley actually, but oh. I mean, so don't sort of try and call it... Well anyway, I enjoyed having fun with you, it was quite yeah. good fun, wasn't it? Okay. It was quite good exercise for the mind. Well, that's right. Yes, God I... God knows who needs that. What? I said God knows who needs that. Well, see, that's my point, mate. That is my point, isn't it? We all need to get G'd up a little bit more. Well, I think we were quite chewed up enough in this country with the situation it is. Now, don't stop. Why don't you stop disagreeing with absolutely everything I say? What, I bet you if I was to tell you that your husband is the finest man on planet Earth, you'd say, well, I don't know about that. No, 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 I wouldn't discuss it. No, I think the point is that we, you, you have your opinion, you have your comments, same as I do. I mean, that's, a, that's just part of, of life's little pattern. But I certainly wouldn't uh, condemn anyone for having opinions. God knows. This is what it's all about. Yes, yeah, all right. Thank you very much, Nifu Paul. 
Uh, but we go now to Worthing, and Mary is on line too. Hello, Mary. Hello, Tommy. Mary. I was cleaning my teeth and only half listening to you, just turning on the radio. Were you advocating that people should have sex if they want it, whether they're married or not, just for the sheer hell of it? Well, they... Is that I, your message? No, I put it better than that. But... <laughs> well, that was the meaning that came over. Yeah. And you said it was to satisfy your animalistic instinct. Yeah. Well, aren't you better than an animal? No, sir. Which animal are you better than? Well, um, I reason. I have reasoning powers, and I think you should live well, when you say a better, more when ethical you, life. When you and say, also, you say, you say, you say it doesn't better, harm when you anybody. Say, when you say Let better. me say my piece, Tommy. No, no I won't. No, 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 because... No, it's no, 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 how me, you overcome people by shouting them no, down, Tommy. No, 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 Mary, 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 Mary. No, that's your blustering way of shutting people up, Tommy. Let me say what I'm going to tell you. No, you're not allowed to come on here and just talk endlessly. No, I'm not going to talk endlessly. If you make a point... Yes, well, I would tell you my two points. Well, we'll deal with my your points, points one at a time. Mary, yes. Mary, Mary. Go on, then. We will deal with your points one Go at a time. Go on, then. You're not an animal, you say. Or you think okay. you're, not, you're not any better than an animal. No. First of all, okay, Go you, right. first of all, you did not hear what I said. Right. Go on, then. Enli enlighten me. How, how did I find that out? By what I've just asked you. Yeah, because yes. you said that you were only half listening. I was. So, on the basis... I did ask your young lady, and she said to come on and ask you yourself. Yeah, well, you didn't. Well, come on, then. Give me the answer. Well, why, then, didn't you ask for clarification? I'm asking you now. Before you, because if you do have reason, wouldn't it have been reasonable to have asked what it was I was trying to say? Well, come on, then. What are you trying to say? I have a question for you. Right. Why didn't you do that yourself? I, d I am asking you now, so I'm backtracking. Come no, on, that answer isn't, me. That's not the answer to my question. No. The, our question is, did you say you were um, satisfying your animal instinct? You should be asking me to repeat what it was I said repeat to you. Repeat it then. Right. Why didn't you think of that yourself? Repeat it now then. Why didn't you think of asking no, me No, you're, you're trying to get out of the answer. Repeat I'm trying it to, I'm now. I'm trying to establish that you're somebody who forms an opinion before you have any of the facts. Right, go on then. Is that true? Give me the facts then. Are you somebody who forms an opinion before Probably you... yes. I jump in with both feet and then wish I hadn't. But come on, give me the facts then. Why do you do that and why does that make you better than an animal? It doesn't, but anyway, I so wasn't, I wasn't saying that I was better than an animal. Yes, you said that five minutes ago. I've got it on tape. Would you like to hear oh, that? Oh, all right, then. Go on, play it back then. Would you like to hear that? <laughs> no. You now you're saying. Now let's uh, carry this discussion further, Tommy. Come on, play the game. We're having a discussion. We're not having an argument. Yes, we are. What? An, argument? an argument? I don't argue with people. I discuss. No, you don't. I am. You don't have the ability I'm to discuss. I'm trying to discuss with you. No, you're you, not. You, are you arrive at the radio. You haven't heard what somebody you said, are but you want to condemn rat, it. Tommy. Well, answer me now, then. What? Which question? Tommy, I asked you, did you say you were no better than animal, you satisfy your animal instincts, and that it hurts nobody? No, I didn't say that. Well, what were you saying then? Which bit? I said and a lot of things answer tonight. those questions, those statements that I've just made. I say this, I say sex is great. Yes. So why not have it whenever you want to? No. No, that's what I say. No, you shouldn't. I didn't How do you, you think we've got an explosion of AIDS, and in the old days, gonorrhea and syphilis? Again, you weren't listening to what I said. Why not? If you're advocating have sex wherever you want it, with whoever you want, yes. and not necessarily your wife or one partner, yes. that is not right. You haven't listened to a word I've said, and yet you but think that, I'm wrong. That is the way what it came that, over. It, yeah, well, no, it didn't come over. You didn't hear properly. Well, go on then, tell me what you did say then. You know what? What? You heard half of what was said. Yeah, but I was cleaning my teeth at the time and running the tap. And, and I was thinking, my God, what's he disgrace. saying on air? You're a disgrace. Thank you very much. You're <laughs> an absolute disgrace. You heard half of what was said. Yes. And that half of what you heard you misunderstood. And right. I'll tell you what you did, you misunderstood it deliberately. No, you, I didn't. Yes, you did, because you wanted to believe that there was somebody saying something that you could get them on. And you can't get me. You can't get me. I'll tell you why you can't get me. Because you're then. not good enough, and because you're not decent enough. Ah. Oh. How long have you been married, Tommy? Because you want to condemn me, and I no, have I'm no not interest in condemning you. I have no interest in trapping you or getting you, but because you pitched up with your boxing gloves on, you're getting a right bloody pounding. <laughs> you're going at me because you know I've won. No. Bye, Tommy! Coward. <laughs> She's gone. Fantastic. Mate, that was quite good fun, wasn't it? Oh eight four five nine five seven double zero five seven is the number. You can uh, text us on... <laughs>
That was super. Oh, uh, double seven, eight, six, twenty, seventy, seventy. Five to eleven is if you've got a train to catch. And we've got, uh, is it Fred? Yes. Alison, there you are, on uh, line one. Good evening, Fred. Good evening, Tommy. I've listened to your show. It's jolly good, you know, old chap. And you said that you don't need the money for doing the show. So I thought, what you could do, seeing as you care about the people in Sudan so much, is send all the money that you earn from doing the show to the people in Sudan. Well, I support several charities, as you would expect. But I'm not going to talk about it because... Why don't you just say what's on your mind instead of hiding behind a remark that you've had too long to think about? No, I think it's actually... A yeah, very go on, say what's on your mind. Go on, make a, com co make a conversation out of it. Well, it's a valid point. You, um... Have you haven't made a point yet. I have made a very good and intense point. No, you? you haven't. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. No, you haven't, because you don't understand yourself. Yes, I do. You see, you're jealous. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. No, you are. Everyone knows no, that. Everyone, everyone, everyone knows that. The first the word that Ed came into everybody's mind that you live when they heard you was that you're jealous. You wish you were me. I'm I don't not blame you. The fact you live in I don't China. blame you. I wouldn't want to be you. I wouldn't want to be you either. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Of course you do. You want to talk. You want to trade. You want to have my life. You want to be me. No, you want to see the things I think. No. You want to. You, you want to smell the things I smell. You want to taste the things I taste. You want to be me. I don't blame you. Lots of people do. <laughs> Mostly men. No, you're too small to me. I wouldn't want to be you. You're only about five foot four. Well, I tell you. Uh, what. I mean, I mean, for, 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 for a big man with a big mouth, you're a midget. Well, that's just a poor insult. I can't be no, bothered. No, you're a midget. You're it's not very big. A poor insult. Can't you do any better than that? Um, I think that's very good. Say you, up. for example. You're a non-entity. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what that's that, that that's the reaction you get when you insult somebody well. No, no, you're a midget. It's not you your laugh. You the laugh. You laugh that reason... Go on, I'll tell you what, mate. You make me laugh. Go on. I, I I'll give you a thousand pounds if you can make me laugh like I just made you laugh. Well, thank you. I've, I've enjoyed you, my kid. No, that's the challenge. No, no, I find... Because you can't do it. So, not only am I everything better than you, but I'm funnier than you. Mind you, we always knew that I would be funnier than you, because when did you last make somebody laugh? When did you last send your money up to the Sudan instead of blabbing your mouth off about how much you well, care about the people enough, in since Sudan? you asked the question... And blabbing your mouth off every weekend about how much you don't need the money, because you're so rich. When I am people, very rich. There's people who would probably tune into your um, show who are actually on the breadline. So and, and, and they enjoy... So, so suppose they think you're a bit of a big mouth. No, they enjoy my... About. They enjoy my success. Well, so what do you care about the people in Sudan? What do you do for them then? They're del I... What do you do for the people in Sudan? Your comment to the woman earlier who phoned up, the very nice sweet woman. No, what, what do you do for people in Sudan? You right. have your mouth off. You yeah. make all the comments across the air. So, so justify, substantiate your claims, Tommy. You're very good at asking other people questions. You tell me what you do for the you people in Sudan. You shut your cake off. No, no, you shut your cake off. Well, no, you shut your cake off. When am I supposed you to answer well, your question? Sudan. When am I supposed to answer the people in Sudan, everyone, but you have loads of money and you don't need people. I'm going for a slash. When you're ready for me to answer your question, Tommy, because he goes on the way down and he cares about the people in Sudan. No, but you care about the people in Sudan, so what are you going to do for them? What are you going to do for them then, Tommy? Well, come on, you justify yourself. Mr. Five foot three and a half, Tommy Boyd, or whatever you are, five foot six, or six and three quarters, what are you doing for the people in Sudan? You can't justify it, you see? You've gone quiet. Or you've cut me off. What I said was, I'd answer your question as soon as you said, now. All you got to do is say, now, and I'll answer your question. Millions are starving in Africa. What are you doing for them, Tommy? You said you care for the people in Sudan. I said I'd answer your question as soon as you said, now. You haven't answered my question. You're not paying attention. Well, let's make, this, let's make this a subject for the next hour. Tommy Boyd says he cares for the people in Sudan, and he earns so much money that he doesn't need to do Southern County's radio on Saturday night. So I'm putting a question to all the audience, what's Tommy Boyd doing for the people in Sudan? You don't he suppose about them. anybody listens to you, do you? Well, I do. I think those are people really enjoying this. I think this is great entertainment. In fact, to be honest with you, I could probably do the show better than you. Well, right, off you go then. Well, OK. Off you go then. You take a call. You get some calls. Off okay, you go. Go on. OK. You get some calls. Nobody's willing to call to talk to you yet. 
Sorry? Nobody's emailed you and nobody's texted you, so what are you going to do? I'll leave it to you. You're well, on. You're, hey, what's your name? I've just, you know my name, you just introduced me. Yeah, but your full name, you idiot. Sorry? Your full name. Pardon? People don't go on the radio as Ken or oh, Arthur, they go on the radio as Bob Scorton. So what's your full name? Can you explain to me technically then how you're going to transmit the call straight to my address? No, what happens is, when you get a call, I will put the call through to you and you can take it. If you get a call. Well, I wouldn't know we're going to get this money of yours to the Sudan from the No, you said that you could present the show better than me. No, no, no. If you do that, listen to me, if you do that, (coughs) right, if you can do it for an hour, all right, I'll pay you my money. I don't want it. You can do what you like with it. No, send it to the Sudan. Don't give it to me. I've got loads of money. I will send you the money and you can do what you like with it. No, I don't need the money. Are you chickening out? No, no, we'll send it to the Sudan. Are you chickening out? No, send it to Oxfam. You're on the air. I am going to go and have a fag. (laughs) And if you get a call, we'll put it through to you. All right, cause I don't mind talking to people on the air. I'm quite happy to talk to people on the air. Yeah, but nobody's called you. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it, Tommy? Well, perhaps they're too busy sending money to the Sudan like you are, supposedly. And nobody's texted you. Well, I'm really worried about that. That's and nobody's really emailed me. you. So that you really can't bothers, That really show. bothers me. I'm really upset about that, Tommy. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to l- let you carry on with your show, no, right? No, no. You've diverted the subjects away from your weak point, which is you made the statement that you care about people in the Sudan. And I just suggested that, seeing as you don't need the money from your show, that you send it to the people in Sudan. It's your show, pal. It's not your show. You're just lucky to have me on it. You're the guy who said you could do it better than me. You're the guy who said he cares about the Sudan. Away you go. You're the guy who said he cares about the Sudan. This is the um, crux of the matter. Um, That Tommy Boyd said he cares about the people in Sudan. And I listened to the show the other week and he said that, um, you know, he doesn't need the money. So I just thought it might be a good idea. If the money he earns from the show, he sends the people in the Sudan. So I'd like to open that up to all the audience, all the loads of people who are listening in South East England about what Tommy Boyd can do with all this money he does doesn't need and he cares about people in the Sudan. So I open that up. That's my question to the floor, to everyone who's listening. I've got to go because I'm just so, so, so not as good as Tommy Boyd. No calls. Um, oh, it's such a shame, isn't it? I'm no really text. upset. No really emails. Uh, can I ask you a question? You're, you're, you're crap. Can, I, can I ask you a question? You're crap. Can I ask you a question? You're crap. Can I ask you a question? You're crap. Well, that's, that's, that's because you're, you're losing. You're insulting me. So you said you somebody were somebody starts me. insulting somebody, Tommy, You've proves... been on the air for two minutes and 43 seconds. Well, you're, lo- you're losing this argument hands down. You said down. you were better than me and you could do the show. Well, I could do the show better than you. Well, you're not doing you've it got, better you than me. You don't even understand the technology you're dealing with. You can't well, handle it and they can't help you. You don't even understand the technology you're dealing with. Gary wants to talk to you. Okay, put him through. Gary from Leeds. Hello, Gary. Hang on a second. Hold on a second. You've got to wait. You don't say hello, Gary. You say Gary from Leeds is online, whatever. No, I don't really want to. I like the... Well, that's how you do phone in, mate. Okay, so... thanks for the lesson, Tommy. Right, so you're Fred. Now you introduce Gary from Leeds. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Gary. Hello, who am I speaking to? Fred. Uh, Fred. Okay. Yeah. How are you, Gary? All right? I'm fine. How's Leeds? It's great. Yeah. You a Leeds supporter? Not really. Who's your support? I'm an armchair fan. Who's your support? Well, I don't really support anything. <laughs> I just love football. Do you? But if I don't go to a match, then I don't really support a team, I, I don't think. Right. What do you think? Mm. He's better than you, Fred. No, I didn't say that, Fred. He's trying to turn us against each other, so if you want to sort of succumb to that, that's up to you. But um, I've got absolutely nothing against you. I work in Leeds sometimes, actually. It's quite a nice place. Um, I like the Dales, and I find it very funny up there. But Tommy, he, he wants to turn us on each other, so if you want to be sort of manipulated into doing that, then that's up to you. But. Well, the Dales aren't in Leeds. Well, I, I rang because I thought that you sounded like a fool. I mean, you asked Tommy a question. He was about who was going to answer it. All you had to do was say no. So why didn't you want him to say no? Sorry? Why didn't you want Tommy... To, I mean, sorry, why didn't you want to say no so that Tommy could answer the question that you have been going on about why for do you about think, five minutes? Why do you think I didn't want to say no? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a mind reader. Well, why do you ask why then? Because I'm not a mind reader. Well, then why ask then if you're not a mind reader? Well, how am I going to find out why you didn't um, want Tommy to answer your question? I don't know. You tell me. You might just like How can I tell you if I can't read your mind? I've just told you I can't read your mind. Good. What do you mean, good? <laughs> what, sorry. Good. Pardon? Sorry. What do you mean, good? Well, good, fine. You know. Good, fine what? Good, fine whatever. Whatever? Yeah. Right. That was interesting, wasn't it? That was really exciting, wasn't well, it? Well, yeah, well, it, it shows really that <laughs> you can't answer any questions. You can't, you can't ask a question 
properly. Are those thoughts, are those thoughts, um, are those thoughts subjective? What do you mean? Well, you obviously don't know what subjective means, so it's pointless talking why, to Why is that obvious? Well... Why is that obvious? Well, because you can't answer the question, are those thoughts subjective? What? What is sub... You yeah, actually... You know what subjective what, means. Ask Tommy, he'll Excuse tell you. me. Excuse me. No, I've just asked you the question, are those thoughts subjective? Yeah, and I'm going to answer your question. Right, go on. Do you want me to answer the question? Well, are those thoughts subjective? No, you asked the question first. You, you asked the question before you asked me what subjective means, didn't you? Well, well I'm asking you if they're subjective, your thoughts. Pardon? Are your thoughts subjective? My thoughts about what? About the statements you're making. What, what statements? I've made, I've made many statements. Well, you haven't answered my question if they're subjective thoughts about your statements. So if you can't even answer the question if they're subjective, why the hell are you asking me the question in the first place? Well, answer me, go on. You've you come out with a statement, so back it up, substantiate your... your well, I don't understand what you want me to back up. You're making... You're asking me questions, and I'm asking you if your questions are, sub, sub, you know, subjective questions, and you can't back them up. How can it be a subjective question? I'm asking I ask you... I'm you, asking you, are your, ask are your you. questions subjective, and you don't know what subjective means, so it's pointless pursuing the conversation if you don't know what I'm saying, is it? So you, you might as well go back to, you know... Do you know how stupid you, know, you, you sound? You still haven't answered my question, have you? But you, you've no, asked me two you've never questions. asked my question about you've subjectiveness. Asked me, you've asked me two, two questions. You've asked me a question. I, I don't even know why they're putting this on the air. It's just not even worth listening to. I mean... Because you know, I asked you. Okay, well, I, I asked you if, you if your question's subjective and you don't know what subjective means. So go and get a dictionary and look it up. And when you understand what subjective means, come back and ask me. And I'll be only too happy to continue the conversation. But you don't know what subjective means. So we're wasting our time pursuing the conversation. Okay, so if I, I tell you what no, subjective means... Right, I'm going. Listen, I'm not discussing I anymore. see. You have to go. Um, See, when you no, go, you've you lost. Don't know, because you're, when you, you go, you you've know, lost. You don't know. No, you don't know what's a When you right. go, you've okay, lost. Right, right, okay, so let's, let's try some more things then. Tell me about the history of Yorkshire, where you come from. Tell me what happened in Texas. Who said I come from Yorkshire? Well, your accent tells me that. But what's that got to do with anything? Well, again, tell, me about, tell me about Yorkshire. Tell me about history. Why do I need to know the history of Yorkshire? Well, you don't seem to know a lot, really, do you? You seem to come on the phone and challenge people. But you, mean, don't, you don't really seem to know a lot about much, do you? I mean, you know, you're not... You're not coming out with anything intelligent, are you? I mean, you're just just coming out with, you know, one-word questions and nothing to back them up. I can't be bothered to talk to you, I'm really. Do you want to know the history of Yorkshire? Yeah, tell, tell you me. You want to know the history of Yorkshire? Yeah, tell, tell me what happened in um, 1066 in Yorkshire. In September 1066, at Stamford Bridge. I mean, yeah, Stamford Bridge? Yeah. What, you want to tell me about the Battle of Hastings? No, that wasn't at uh, Stamford Bridge, that was at Bell. See, that's what I'm saying. You, 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 come, on the, you come on the phone. It's, it's, like, it's like Tommy goes on the phone and he talks about the starving people in Sudan, and then he, the week before he's saying he's earning loads of money and he doesn't need it. So my point was then why doesn't he send his money that he's earning from the show on Saturday night to the people in Sudan? I think that's quite a good point. I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, do you care about people in Sudan? But you're, <laughs> Hang on a minute. But let's get to the point. You're, you're not substantiating your point, my old son. What point? You're just stuck in the question now. You're not substantiating your points. All you do is come on here and make a load of... Substantiating what point? I haven't made your points. Do you think your comments are trite? The only points I've made... Do you think your comments are trite? The only only point that I have made... I don't think this is on the air and I hope it's not because I... I think it is. The only point that I've made is about you. Is that how, how foolish you sound? Well, no, because, because because you have to you know, question. No, 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 I mean, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take on... Did I say I wasn't from Yorkshire? Well, it's obvious you are, isn't it? I mean, you know, it doesn't take on Einstein to work that out, yeah, but, does it? So, so, but, so, if I, so if, I, if, I, if I lived in the Sudan, do you, you think I should know uh, about the history of Sudan? Well, I mean, you know, you're, you're coming on the, on the why radio... Why do you think I need to know the history of... Uh, you're oh, coming oh, on the radio... Why do you think I know to, need to know the history of Yorkshire? Well, I, you know, I'm just saying... And why do you think if I did know everything about Yorkshire, you know... What would that mean? It mean you had a bit of intelligence, wouldn't it? Because you're the Why one, would it? You're, 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 you're the one making... What's making... intelligence? Sorry? What is intelligence? Well, it's something you certainly haven't got, isn't it? <laughs> That's pretty fair. I, I think mean, I sound more intelligent you... than you. Oh, do you? Yeah. How do you justify that, then? How uh, do I justify that? Yeah. Mm, tell me. I'm one of the wisest men on the planet. Are you? I'll have you know. Really? Yes. Okay, would you like to tell me some... You know, perhaps I can ask some more questions then if you're so wise. Well, tell you what, Fred, uh, you, you're doing a really crap job hosting this show, but why don't you link to another caller as well as Gary, because there's plenty of people who would very much appreciate um, 
some of your wisdom. For example, Tony from Crawley. Would you like to yeah, have Tony on. and Gary? Let's see whether we can... Tony. Uh, so go ahead. No, Gary, you, you're the host. Uh, Fred, you're the host. So you yeah. say, Gary, stay right where you are. Let's bring in Tony from Crawley on this one. Off you go. No, I can't do that. I'm not capable. Sorry. Say out of my intellectual range, you're just so superior, I'll leave that bit to you. It's beginning to look that way. Mm. Tony, you're through to Fred. What did you want to say to Fred? Hello, uh, hello Fred. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Um, Gary, you can hear me okay, okay, can you? Yeah, yeah, sure. How are you doing? Are you having a good um, This isn't working. I can only hear him via the radio. You can only hear what, sorry? Tommy? Alison? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I can, um... Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, we were trying something different. Yes, I know, Alison, explain up. that. All right, then. Okay, listen, Tony, I'll tell you what. Um, if you put the phone down, Alison will phone you back. And Gary, can I say thank you very much indeed for your call? Okay. All right, I uh, really appreciate it. I really enjoyed yeah. it as well. It was great, great fun. Okay. Thanks for that. I'll talk to you again sometime. All right, then, bye. Fred, you stay right where you are. And do a bit... Are you there, Fred? Mm. Yeah, do a bit of padding then, because we've got to get Tony up on a different line for you. Well, it's not very good, Tony. I thought you said you could run the show well. Pad man, pad. I, I, thought, I thought you said, you, you, you know... You, Remind you, us of what's going on. You could, you could position, you run the show. No, I mean, I, was, I thought you were running it. I mean, I'm, I'm just a side show. I thought you were sort of, you know... Pad, mate, you're not it. there yet. You know. Pad. 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 That. <laughs> Remind people what's going on. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm just an amateur. You're being paid. I mean, I'm doing this free. I mean, are you going to send me a sort of cut of tonight's money? That's what I said I'd do if you were any good. Well, why are you keep me on then? Because you said that you were better than me. Well, that's not hard, is it? Well, carry on then. Well, Pad, you're all right. You've got, we've got Tony on another line now, so you can introduce your next caller. Fred, who's Tony from Crawley. Hello. Just no, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to Tommy, because he's sort of better at me than this, you know. Yeah, so anyway, Tony, you're through to Fred. Hello. Hello. Yeah, he can hear you, Tony. about starving people in uh, Sudan and uh, it reminds me of a radio show I sure, so, um, sort of uh, listened to and um, the commentator said that he cared about people in Sudan and he said that he didn't need to do the show he had so much money just thinking about who that reminded me of can't think are you there Tony? let me think you're not doing very well, Tommy, are you? I thought you said you could handle the show. <clears throat> yeah, you, 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 you're in charge of the show. I'm just helping you out from time to time with the technicalities. If you were well, here... Well, I mean, you're, you're not doing very well. You're not getting people through. I mean, do you think you ought to get an engineer in there who knows what he's doing? Because, I mean... That's what happens in radio. You have to deal with it. Well, yeah, but, I mean, you're not doing very well, are you? No, you're not doing very well. No, I'm doing better than you. Pad, just tell people what's going on. We'll see whether we can get uh, Tony back from Crawley. But at the moment, you're on your own. Oh, dear. I'm so upset. Would you like a sidekick? Would you like Alison in here just to have a chat She's with you? She's got her? a nicer voice than you have. You've got Alison in, yeah, by all means, Well, hold on, she's just getting Tony up. This is what happens to me, and you've got to fill. So, um... I, I've got to go soon, anyway. I can't sit on here and talk to you all night. I've got other But you said you could do the show till 12. Well, if you want, I'll stay on. It doesn't bother me. It really doesn't bother me. I'll sit on here and talk to you all night long, if it makes you happy. But what are we going to do about the starving people in Sudan, Tommy, which was your original statement? Well, what did Gary have to say to you about that? Oh, lots of intelligent and profound and deep things. Such as? I don't know. You tell me. You're listening. What are you, you, are you not? No, but what, what do you think about the starving people in Sudan? Are you going to send them any of this money you earn? Are you saying that you, you weren't listening to Gary? Uh, uh, Tommy, it, you said you earn loads of money and that you don't need to do the show and you don't need the money and that you worry about the people in Sudan. I'll send you so a thousand pounds. You can do what you like with it if you tell me what Gary had to say to you. No, you won't send me a thousand pounds at all. What did Gary have to say? You won't send me a thousand pounds at all. What's I'll Gary's tell you what, point? I'll tell you what, Tommy, I challenge you on air to send that thousand pounds to Oxfam. What did Gary? That? How about that, Tommy? I'll send you to send thousand, a thousand pounds of your mingy little money to Oxfam. Oh, I, yeah. I will provide it. You tell me what Gary had to say to you. I'm not going to explain to you what Gary said to me. You I'm can't listen, can you? What do you mean I can't listen? I'm listening to you. You don't have any listening skills. That's not true. You don't have any listening That's skills. That's not true. I'm sorry. What did Gary say to you? 
I don't want to tell you what Gary said to me. You can't. I want to know why you. I, I want to know why you won't send a thousand pound to Oxfam. He didn't pick up a word he said. Did why you? Why won't you send a thousand pound to Oxfam, Tommy? Talk to him for Why won't you send a thousand pound to Oxfam, Tommy? <clears throat> Tommy, why with all your money that you boast about with your great big mega mouth about how much money you've got, don't you send some money to the Sudan because you said you care about I've it? I've got another caller. It's Paul from Eastbourne. Do you want to introduce him or shall I? No, you do. Paul from Eastbourne would like to speak to Fred. Go ahead, Paul. Hello, Fred. Hello, mate. How are you? Yeah. Do you, do you remember what Gary said? Sorry? Do you remember what Gary said? Do you remember what he said? Yeah, I did. Repeat after me. He said, now. Sorry? He said, now. Repeat after me. He said, now. No, nah, sorry. Can't do nah. it. Yeah. Do you, what, you know, what, what kind of person makes a radio presenter? You tell me. I'm asking you the question. You tell me. No, I'm asking you the question. No, nah, sorry, mate, can't tell you. You, you can't do it, can you? Nah, no, I'm not as, not as bright as you, obviously. No, 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 no. Well, you know, it's about, you know, personality, it's about charisma. Is it? And, mate, yeah, I'll tell you something, uh, Fred. Mm. You ain't got it, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alright, well, there we are. Well, look, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, obviously haven't got what you've got, and I'm, I'm so terribly sorry about that, but, um, are you going to send some money to what's going then, mate, instead of spouting yeah. your mouth off? Well, I actually said it's children in need, but... Oh, do you uh, know what? How much do you send to them, then? Eh? How much do you send well, to them? Well, you've got to me about a thousand pounds, but my corporation's done about two point two. Oh, well, that's wonderful, aren't you? Good. Well, let's just... Can we have a round of applause for this chap here, because he's such a nice fellow? Ready? One, two, three. Everyone clap hands. Right, ready? There we are. Aren't you a good chap? I just... It's just so wonderful you're so good. Yeah, Mr. Thank, you, thank you very much for being such a... Such a great guy. <laughs> You know, boy, we'll we have to get this loser off the old radio out because he's a complete tosser. So uh, I know he is, but... I'll over to you, mate. Teach. I uh, know you. Good night. All right, thanks, Paul. So it's, it's funny that you're letting all certain types of people through who just agree with you, Tommy, isn't it? And all the other people who don't agree with you, how you don't let them through. That's very, very clever, isn't it? I'm, I've got no control over that, Alex. Oh, no, no, you don't know you, you haven't. You're too much of a flipping wimp to let anyone through who disagree with you. you didn't want to that say just about then, sums you up, Tommy. You're a great presenter. I love your show. You're a lovely guy. I, I love it, and I'm going to keep listening to it because it's great entertainment. Love you, but I just wish you'd back up if you say you care about people in the Sudan. That was my point. Good evening. Yeah. Okay, anybody there? Good evening, you're on Southern Counties Radio. Hello, Tommy. Hello, who's this? Martin from Little Hampton. Welcome, Martin. I'm finding you for two reasons. Okay. One is because I'm a glutton for punishment. Yep. And the second one is you mention golf courses and yep. golf. Marvellous game. Okay, and then... <laughs> uh, firstly, we've got a few golf courses around world in Little Hampton, you're no, no doubt aware of. I'm aware of a lot of them, yeah. Yeah. Now, a, a tenuous link, but uh, you may have, you may be aware that there's a bypass uh, going around the village of Angmering near Little Hampton. I, 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 I fall asleep very quickly during conversations about bypasses. Okay, well obviously try and drink some more coffee and you should have paid attention at school, you would have got used to it then. I'll stick to the Cabernet Sauvignon, Good night. That's alright. Carry on. Right. Yeah. Um, amusingly, we call the bypass at Angmering locally the diversion because the bypass actually takes longer to get round Angmering than it does to go straight through it. Now, local theory is that the bypass should have been put through on the western side of Angmering, but didn't get put through there because of the golf course, i.e. Ham Manor. So the, what, I, what I like to discuss is, do local Little Hampton people and the Angmering people feel that the planners were afraid of actually purchasing the land comp compulsorily off, off hand man golf course. It doesn't matter, man. Move on. Well, have you tried driving around there? They, they, what about the poor people of Amring yeah. that had to have people driving through it? There are worse things than To take the shortcut. There are you worse ask, ask the Amring people that have phoned you up and they'll tell you there's not worse things. No, they're not. They're not everybody in Amring's is anywhere near as small-minded as that. Come on, just believe well, them. Well, they were selling their houses. They, they, well, they're, they're trying to sell their houses now because they didn't get the bypass they wanted. Leave, leave for work ten minutes earlier, mate, and then you, you won't be delayed. I'll walk to work. Well, what's your problem, then? It's not a problem. I what's it got to do, with, like, it do like, with you? It's got nothing to do with you. Oh, it has. And you're it poking has, your yeah. nose in where it doesn't belong. Now, well, come on, Martin. An example that golf courses rule the world. Yeah? Well, I'd rather, I'd, rather, I'd, rather, I'd rather Tiger Woods rule the world than you. I mean, what would your world be like if you ran the world then? What would be the first thing you'd do tomorrow, right? Like, wake up and it's all... Oh, oh, have you stopped Earth. people? Martin in Littlehampton is now king of planet Earth. So what's the first thing you're going to do then? 
get Tommy Boy some manners and get you to pay attention at school a bit more to teach you some rules now, wouldn't yeah, you? So you haven't got a single creative idea of your own, have you, Martin? Well, eh? I think quite a few people find that creative. Well, let's, let's, hear, let's hear your idea then. Come on, man. You say that golf clubs rule the world. I know you're exaggerating because <laughs> your point wouldn't be interesting if you didn't exaggerate a little bit, something. It's still not very interesting, but anyway, bypasses. <gasps> I really do need a big shot of adrenaline, you know, and it needs to be lambs adrenaline because that's good stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen it in the doctor's See, you don't need, Johnny. Keep me lied. Uh, uh, my name's Tommy, by the way. I haven't forgotten your name, Keith. So I wasn't bothered about it. I don't think your name's a consequential word. One thing you need is a lot, le lot less hyperbole. It's not because pronounced you're hyperbole. You're the king of exaggeration, aren't you? It's not pronounced hyperbole. Oh, isn't it now? No, it's not. I've checked on this. Just like it's not a buffet, it's a buffet. <laughs> no, it is. It's a buffet on the train. I bet you still say buffet, don't you? It depends on which school you very rarely attend. Hyperbole. It depends on which school you very rarely attended. What does so the, you obviously what, didn't, did What are you? the roots of the word hyperbole, then? What does that matter? Yes, you use the word, mate. Well, you don't do know what it means, what it do means? you? Is that what you're asking me? No, I'm not. I asked you what the roots were. Is that really... What's the consequence of that? Find out with your education. Let's not digress here. You're asking what, what I'd like to do about golf courses. No, uh, excuse me. Uh, we're not digressing. No, I won't excuse you. I won't excuse you. You've gone off at a tangent. No, you, you went off at a tangent by using, a, by using the word you didn't know what the root was. <laughs> Does that matter? Yes, otherwise you shouldn't use the word if you don't know what it means. Of course I know what it means. What's its root then? What's the root of the word hyperbole? Do you mean the meaning of it? No, I mean the roots of it! Well, is it Latin it or Greek? Is it, it is it Latin or Greek? Oh dear, does it really matter? Yeah, well, you shouldn't use the word then if you don't know what it means. It's part of the English language, is it not? No, it's Greek! Is it not in the English language? It's Greek! It may be Greek to you, as everything obviously is. It's Greek, and you didn't know that. Now Who you said I didn't know that? I just didn't want to... You didn't know that. Just the game. What are the roots of the word hyperbole? Oh, I don't want to tell you. I don't, I don't bother. All right, what's the text dictionary definition of the word hyperbole, then? It's exaggeration. No, it isn't. It is? No, it isn't. Go and get well, a dictionary it's... now and bring it to the radio and read it out. Does a dictionary really matter to you? Have you got what? one in the house? Oh, I'm not in the house. Where are you? <laughs> That's none of your business. <laughs> well, is there a dictionary there? Uh, no, I haven't got a dictionary here, no. Why not? Uh, look, John, Tommy, the fact is that it's inconsequential how I, what I meant by hyperbole. People know it means... Listen, pal, if you're going to come... Listen, listen to me. No, just, just listen to me. If you want to get personal, forget it. Because you're dealing with a god what's of a getting personal. What a hypocrite. No, that, actually, hypocrisy is not what I'm talking about at the moment. That's what you're doing, though. That's mm. what you were doing to me a short while ago. Why is that hypocritical? You're getting personal with me. Uh, yeah, so, I, no, well, what did I say to you that was personal? All this bit about, get a life, man, what would you do if you ruled the world, all that sort of thing. That wasn't personal. Yeah. Oh, wasn't you said, it? You, no, you said... You make this up as you go on, don't you? <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Did you just spot that? <laughs> or are you on page 37 then, eh? Down at the bottom then, your line comes in and says... Your creativity is all about basically just coming out with a load of insulting provocation at people, isn't it? You started and, it. And, you started it. Oh, here we you are. You started it. You started it, because here you are, you think you've got a point to make about a goddamn bypass. You are middle, of a like middle of a Saturday evening, light entertainment, phone-in show, man rings up from Little Hampton and wants to talk about the bypass. For oh, goodness sake, I said it before, I'll say it again. To you, and if you take it personally, a fine. It's a diatribe, Tommy, it's a diatribe. Get a life. Contradiction, it's argument and a diatribe. Get I'll a life. Well, I'll make the point if you'll let me. No, I don't want you to make the point, because I have a very strong suspicion that it will be tedious. Oh, do you? Yes. But you're hypocrite again. Go on, hypocrite then. Again. Go on, then. Make your point. The point is... Make your point, point. Make your point. And you tell me... Uh, you Tommy, tell me after you've made your point... Tommy, can you stop scale? interrupting me? No. You stop interrupting me, Tommy. I'll no, I won't. You. No, I won't. I'll talk over you now. The planners... No, you don't talk over me, because if I want to, I can do that. So go ahead. You talk over me, then. No. Right. Around. No, we didn't hear a word of that because I faded you down. The point yeah, I want to make did. is this: you make no, the point. Fade me down, Tommy. Yeah, you I'm make your point. You make you're very rude. You make your point about the the planners, provided. Uh, provided. You're me down. No, I'm not going to be faded down twice, Tommy. Here's the deal. If you're going to fade, you're gonna fade your listeners Here's down. Here's the deal. Get Here's the deal. You well, make we'll your point we'll about. We'll you we'll make your point about the bypass, and then afterwards, tell me on a scale of one to ten how boring it was. Tommy, I'm not the bother because you're going to fade me down. Off you go. All right, no, I'm not going to be faded down again. We'll have a, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a boycott of you and we'll all go off air. Who's we? You and the cat? <laughs> Tommy, that you mustn't assume these things again. Other listeners. The, the other listeners. What do you know what? about listeners? What do you do? 
What do I do? It's not your business. I know a lot more. What do you do, Tommy? I'm a bloody broadcaster, you idiot. Isn't that obvious? Don't flatter yourself. Well, well, what do you think I'm doing? Sat here in front of a microphone. You ask me what I do. I'm that's a broadcaster. A, that's as much of a broadcaster as you are. You happen to have a microphone and a large mouth. Well, I, do you know what? I can't think of two other more necessary credentials. Can you? He's gone. Fantastic. No, I'm sorry, but there are there was a time and a place to talk about the bypass. <laughs> I really don't think that on a Saturday night at ten o'clock on New Year's Day, people re what is it with some people who think that the bypass is just the be all and end all? And once they got their the bit between their teeth, you know, once they got the taste of it, they kind of Pious, the bypass must be built, the bypass must not be built, then all else goes out the window. Anyway, Martin, next time you want to talk about the bypass, phone somebody else on a Saturday night. There's a good lad.